In our parade of packages that make your everyday life in Sublime Text a little bit easier, we've covered packages that help you install other packages, look at the contents of those packages, edit them, and even keep track of your edits. If you're interested in creating your own packages in Sublime Text, there's a package for that as well. And despite its name, it is insanely useful for everyday Sublime Text use. So that's why this video is about Package Dev. <laughs> Hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odat Nerd here. Welcome to this video on Package Dev, the package that's better for more than just that. Now, as always, before we get started, as a reminder, if you're finding these videos in any way useful or helpful, please use those buttons down below the video to thumb, subscribe, and share as you deem appropriate. And if you have any questions or comments on the content of this video, any of the videos on the channel, or suggestions for other Sublime Text topics you'd like me to cover, including other packages you think would fit with this series, you can drop those down in the comment section below or hit me on Twitter at odatnerd. The topic of today's video is the package package dev, which despite its name is, as I said in the introduction, insanely useful for everyday sublime text use and is thus highly recommended, at least by me. By way of demonstration of how this package can help you in your everyday use of sublime text, if we were going to the command palette and use view package file to look at the user Windows keys, for example, because I'm on Windows, we'll see that this is, as far as the bottom of the window is concerned, a JSON file. And the syntax highlighting, not a, a lot to write home about. There's comments and that's uh, about it. Um, we could also, if we wanted to, use view package file and look at our user pref set to find the user preferences. This is our uh, preferences pa uh, settings here for the way I have my copy of Sublime Text set up. And again, this is a JSON file, not particularly interesting to look at. And if we also did the same thing and looked at a Python Sublime build file, like so, again, this is a JSON file and the syntax highlighting leaves um, a little to be desired. Now, as always, if we want to know more about a package, we can go into the command palette and type discover packages, which causes package control to open the package control website in your browser. And here we could type package dev like so to find the package and click on it. And here we'll see that this is a very popular package. It's been around for a while. And of course, as we scroll through here, there's information on getting started and the link to the documentation for this and some other features as well. And as always, you should uh, do as I say and not as I do and read through that information. But we're creating a video here, so I'm just going to skip over that part here. And we can use package control install package to install packages. And when the list pops up, we can type package dev and hit enter like so. And now the package is installed. And we can even see in the status line override audit, which we audited in the previous video, did a check to make sure that everything was A-OK -okay there. Now that package dev is installed, let's take a look at those same files that we just previously looked at. So we can again go to view package file and look at the user win key map like so. And we can see the syntax highlighting in here is a lot nicer than it was before. There are still comments, but the keys in the JSON objects are syntax highlighted as are the values in here as well. So this is automatically nicer to look at. The next file we looked at was the user preferences, like so. And again, we can see that this is syntax highlighted uh, as well in a way that's different than we saw in the key map here. The colors are a little bit different here. And of course, for the last one, if we looked at the Python build file, this is also syntax highlighted. And if you watched our videos in the series on build systems, then we're more familiar with how the keys in here are color coded to tell you which 
arguments are going to the command executing the build and which aren't. But you can view that video. It's linked in the description if you want more information on that. Now, aside from syntax highlighting like this, there's a lot of other functionality that is available here as well. Now, if we went over to the key map, for example, if I wanted to add a new key binding, I could, of course start typing things and as soon as I did that we can immediately see one feature of this that the standard uh, syntax highlighting for Sublime doesn't show you is that there's currently an error in my key bindings because there needs to be a comma separating each binding. And there's not one currently because I haven't typed it yet so the area of the file that's broken is marked. So automatically if nothing else using this makes it easier for you to determine if your settings files are broken. And of course, this works in key maps and in settings and in Python build files, all of the sublime text uh, package resources you're likely to run into. Now, if I was creating my own, then I'd have to start typing items like so. And we can see I can auto-complete keys and get some keys in here. And it's also allowing me to auto-complete this. Maybe I want something to pop up when I get uh, press the context menu button on my keyboard. And I also need a command and it's auto-populated that as well. And even so, if I start typing text in here, it is showing me all commands in all packages that match this. So if I knew I wanted to use the exec command like so, I can choose that one. And now I know that that's a command that exists that helps me find it. Now let's say I want arguments for this command. We can see this says auto detected arguments. And as soon as I push the key, it automatically inserts an args key that contains all of the arguments that this command is knows how to execute. And we might say, well, we don't want to use command, but we do want to use shell command to run something like so and so on and so forth. And that makes that a little bit easier. I'm going to undo all of that stuff there. It's actually even easier than that because package dev supports a auto completion named E for entry. And this applies to a variety of um, default uh, package type resources. I to type E, it's, you can see it says key binding entry here. And as soon as I press tab, it automatically expands out to a key and a command. And it even added the comma so this isn't broken. And then I could modify this as I did before and say I want this to be the exec command like so. And my key binding is good to go. I'm going to close this file now and we'll discard the changes. Now, when it comes to the preferences, we're going to notice a couple of things. This comment, this uh, setting on line 12 has an underline on it. That's because that's a setting that I have added to my preferences because of a package that I have developed. There's also a video on that on the channel. Um, and this isn't a setting that's recognized by Sublime. So it's underlined here to let me know that that's an unrecognized setting. But even better than that, we'll note that here in my default preferences, I might not know what the various caret style options are. I know that I have it set to solid, but what's the default and what else can I put in here? If I hover my mouse over the setting like so, then package dev pops up a uh, pop up to tell me that the default value is smooth and that what the valid values are. And the same applies for any setting that you might want to pop in here. Like so and we can see how I have configured this to be different in some ways. And sometimes when I copy a setting, I copy the default value in here so that I have it to refer to so that I can change it later. There's actually something even cooler about preferences that we can't see here. If we were to use the standard command here in the command palette or in the menu to open our preferences, and I'll just maximize that window, we can see we get the same split view. But now we can scroll through here and decide if there uh, is a, perhaps an option in here that we want to have that we don't already, like say line numbers. Now traditionally what you would have to do is copy this and click over here and paste. But what we can actually do is click on this pencil icon right here and package dev will automatically, as we can see in the right hand pane, pop that 
setting up for us, copy the value in and allow us to modify it. And we could change it to false if we don't want to have line numbers. But I do want to have line numbers, so I'm going to leave that like that for the time being. We'll go ahead and close that now. And we can close that file. And for build files, the same sort of thing will happen in here as well. You can auto-complete keys, and it makes your life a little easier when you're editing your build systems as well. Now, package dev itself also adds many commands to the command palette, as we can see here. You can create a package, create a new theme. If you are a package developer, or even if you're not, you can use open package. And we can see here, there's a list of all packages that are unpacked in the packages folder. And if I was to pick, say, for example, the user package, that's my user package, a new window will open that has my user package open in it directly. And now I can use things like go to anything to find my preferences and work on my user package and find files very easily, including being able to use find and files to find plugins and things of that nature. So that's uh, very useful as well. There's a lot of other items in here and you're going to want to look in the documentation to see more about how all of these work. These same options are also available up here in the tools menu under packages, package development, and we can see a lot of them here. One of the more handy items in here uh, that makes life a lot easier is being able to edit your current color scheme or your current theme. Now, if we again go into the uh, preferences, and I'll just use the key bindings for this to pop up here, and we look at my color scheme, we can see that it's set to packages, color scheme, default, monokai, dot, sublime, color scheme. That's the default color scheme, and that's providing me colors like we're seeing here. Now, if I was to just start typing random text in here, we can see that the default text color is white. What if I wanted that to be a, a different color? Package Dev makes this ridiculously easy to do. So if we said edit colors, current color scheme like so, this is going to open us up a window that looks very much uh, like what you might see when you're editing your settings or your key bindings. On the left is the color scheme as it exists in the package, and on the right is our customized version of that. And as I said uh, previously, anything that we add into our file on the right is just when Sublime loads it, added to what's on the left, the same way key bindings and preferences are. So if we wanted to change the foreground color, all we have to do is come up here and change the global foreground key. Now, color schemes are a big topic. They're worth a video all on their own, so we're not going to cover that here. You want to view the official documentation for color schemes to know exactly everything we might want to do in here. But we could change the foreground color of this to say the color red like so and hit the key and now we can immediately see we see it there and if we switch over to the other window with our lorem ipsum the default color is now red for text but of course other things that our syntax highlighted like the strings in the left hand side are still the color that they were before and we can comment that out to put things back and so just for these reasons alone package dev is incredibly useful in your everyday sublime text usage even if you're not developing packages of course, if you do want to edit packages, there are a variety of commands to make your life easier there as well. For example, if we said we wanted a new main menu file for our package, it gives us a stub main menu that allows us to add a preferences menu. And we could type cool package like so cool package and as soon as we save this we'll get an entry up in the preferences menu under package settings for cool package. So there we have package dev, a package that is incredibly useful not only for package developers, but also for standard Sublime Text users as well. And if you're not using it, I highly recommend it just for the syntax highlighting alone. It's worth its weight in gold. It makes your everyday Sublime Text use that much nicer. That's all I have for this video, though. I'd like to thank you for watching. If you find these videos in any way useful or helpful, please thumb subscribe and share using those buttons down below as 
as you deem appropriate. And of course, if you have any questions or comments on the content of this video, any of my videos or suggestions for other videos, you can drop those down in the comment section below or hit me on Twitter at OdatNerd. But until the next Package Parade video, this is OdatNerd asking you to please have a sublime day.